man in the run game. Um, and in a defense that has been very aggressive at the line of scrimmage, uh, with their defensive front and their defense all around creating a lot of TFLs, creating uh, havoc on the line of scrimmage. This will be one of the best defensive fronts that we play against uh, this year. Uh, you can see that on film from all the opponents that they've played against. Um, they do a great job in coverage, uh, you know, playing with the front end and the back end together and the different things they do with their cover four and their uh, cover three defenses and the pressures they bring along with it. So um, it's been a good start to the week for us. Get back here after our last game, after a Friday game and having a Saturday to be able to get our minds and our bodies rested as we push forward. We had a great practice yesterday, just a little bit longer than usual um, to work on some things that obviously we, we talked about after the game in terms of uh, some certain fundamentals, uh, in particular tackling and making sure that we get off to a good start of the week and creating the habits necessary uh, as we move into the week and how we practice and ultimately how we'll play in the game. Um, so we're, we're excited about um, you know where the team is at right now. It was a huge win for us uh, last week on the road, first conference game, um, working towards uh, our goal. And uh, now, it's obviously, we flipped the page and moved on to this next opponent who's going to bring a lot of challenge. Andy, um, I think before you said when you like to, you'll, you'll go a day early if it's two time zones. Yeah. This is one time zone, but it's kind of on the cusp there. Why are you guys going on Thursday? We're split hairs. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's typically, it's not necessarily just two time zones, but it's the length of the travel. Um, you know, and the, the amount of hours you spend on the flight and the players uh, being able to, uh, you know, get that travel in just a little bit earlier than we normally would gives them, you know, gives us time to get there and get their bodies ready to roll. Um, it's nothing out of the ordinary that we've done when we've traveled uh, this far east. Facing another returning starter at quarterback, I think it's his third year starter. Yeah. All of them have been a little bit different. So what does Hennigan bring to the table for them and what does he do maybe better than some of the other ones? Yeah, well, what we've seen, you know, in our film studies thus far is that he's efficient at getting the ball out quick. Um, there are schemes that allow him uh, to take the free access throws, uh, the way they create free access and or how coverage is playing. Uh, he's able to see those things and, and get the ball out uh, pretty quick, disperses it around the field. Uh, top targets that he likes to go to. I mean, their wide receiver core is big. They're fast. Um, they have the ability to stretch the field vertically, but um, as well as spraying the ball around to the tailback, you know, to get him his touches, not just out of the backfield, but in the, in the, in the pass game as well. And what was it like going back and watching some of these action runs in that game? I mean, you know, quite a few yak yards or missed you know, yards after contact as well. What was it yeah. like going back and watching that? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, obviously a you know, congrats to Ashton for getting uh, Player of the Week in our conference. Uh, you know, that's, you know, as we said, uh, he was the workhorse the other night. Um, but it also comes down to the O-line play, the tight ends, and the wide receivers blocking. Ashton did a great job of, um, you know, when there was space, he attacked it. When there wasn't, he ran behind his pads. Uh, he ran really hard the other night. It was exciting to see. He was able to be explosive, you know, in the run game, and we were still able to get him the ball in the pass game as well. And he had a, you know, he had a lot of touches in that game. Was, was there one you look back on and you know, just kind of like, man, how did he, how did well, he do that? I mean, there was there was a, a few of them, um, but the one that was really impressive was there late in the game when he was uh, one on one with the linebacker in the hole, and we needed a first down as we were in the four minute to continue to chew up the clock, and it was him and the linebacker in the hole. You know, he got the best of them and, and uh, obviously was able to keep the chains moving. That was pretty impressive because on a play-to-play of -play particular schemes, you know, you're going to have to make somebody miss. Or obviously you're going to have to uh, um, be able to go in tight quarters like that, be able to run behind your pads, and he was able to do that. San Diego State was able to convert some long third downs against you guys uh, yeah. last week. Uh, I think you guys, obviously, third downs are a little bit of a struggle. I think you're 84th in the country. Well, what are you seeing on third down in terms of trying to get off the field? Yeah, so it's a combination of you know what we're doing in the pre-snap. It is always about what we're doing in the pre-snap uh, to create different pictures once the ball snaps. And that goes in line. It's not just the coverage. It's the front. It's the pressure. Uh, being able to get the quarterback off his spot. Being able to maintain the pocket as well. Um, within our leverages and our rush lanes, and then obviously being able to execute 
our coverage techniques. And I guess it's common sense, but I mean, the defensively, some of the issues you guys are facing, how much, if you could get off on third down more often and get off the field, how much? That's always, a, we call them money downs for a reason, and that's always a primary goal on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, and what we need to continue to do is just grow with it each and every week within this. We're uh, um, obviously getting off the field on third downs. We've been able to do that in the past successfully. Uh, we know what that recipe looks like. Uh, as coaches, we'll do a better job making sure that uh, you know we're aligned and we're preparing that way with what we're doing in the meeting rooms and taking it to the field. You we talked about the... Ashton being a, a workhorse. That's a word that we love to use in the media. And you're going to map things out game to game every Saturday. But is, is what he did on Saturday or this past week sustainable, or do you need a more established run from other people? Um, you know, that's always the question, right? But it's it's from game to game what's successful. And, and when you're in a game and you're having success doing certain things, I don't think you go away from it, right? And so, um, yes, do do we uh, have other options and do we need to get those going? But again, once more, when we're in a game, we're not going to stop doing something that is successful. And that's the way the game played out the other night. Um, and thankfully so. Like, uh, the line of scrimmage, our, our offensive front played really well. The wide receivers blocked well. Um, but yes, being able to target uh, some other guys, I mean, that's always a part of the game plan. But in last week in this exact meeting, you were asked about offensive identity. And then after the game on, after the San Diego State game, you said, we're going to run to win. Do you see this team pushing the run more and more each week from here on out? Um, again, when you get into a game like that and you're having the success that you do in the run game, um, there's no reason to go away from it. You know, being able to build off of what you're doing in the run game now, like that's a big part of it, right? And so we're not going to go into the game um, just saying that we're going to run the ball and that's all we're going to do. Um, but by naturally by the course of the game and, and what's, what's successful, what someone's having a hard time stopping, you're not going to go away from that. This week there's going to be a huge emphasis on how it all comes together with the wide receivers, the quarterbacks. Obviously protection is at a premium when you're passing the ball. This week we're facing a defensive front you know, that could very well be the best we've seen all season. Again, uh, TFL-wise, there's a reason why they're successful on third downs um, in the passing down situations. And so we're going to have a huge challenge up front you know, with our protections. And then it comes down to us uh, getting our timing in the passing game and really bringing that together. And it's going to be a huge deal this week in practice with how we're running our routes, uh, the speed off the ball, the timing. Um, obviously, for, for both sides with the wide receivers and the quarterbacks, making sure that we're on point and we have um, you know, the trust that we're going to be where we need to be in so that we can execute in the game. You mentioned the timing. Was was that something you thought was off on Saturday or on Friday? Well, we got a little more uh, press coverage and tighter coverage than what was shown on film. Now, naturally, we got to be able to handle whatever coverages we're getting. Um, but, uh, you know, there were still some opportunities that, you know, we felt like we left on the field that we've got to be able to see things and be more efficient with the ball and get the ball out on time. But again, that's going to be a huge part this week. We're going to have to get the ball out on time because of the defensive front that we're facing. So um, each and every week, it, you play a different opponent, they're going to post, they're going to present different challenges. Uh, but the overall is that, yes, we do we want to continue to grow forward within the pass game? We must. That's going to complement the run game, you know, as we move forward week to week. You uh, mentioned what you see defensively from them, just what you're expecting, and maybe what you think they do best as you, as you watch the defensive line. Yeah, the defensive line, we're going to see primarily four down prone. We see some cover four, some post defenses. Uh, uh, some cover threes, and then we're going to get, you know, they, they got some uh, five-man pressures with some uh, three-deep uh, zone behind uh, that we're going to have to handle. And so um, for us, you know, it always starts at the line of scrimmage, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, as we talked about. And then from there, being able to be efficient, you know, in both the run and the pass and what we're doing in the pass game that allows us to be efficient, again, comes together with the wide receivers and the quarterback. And then, you know, like we spoke on, um, our our o line is, is going to have another uh, tough challenge this week in our tight ends with the guys we're facing up front. You mentioned their pass. I mean, um, you, I mean, obviously, the the pass defense has still been a bit of a struggle for you guys. Just you know, what do you guys have to fit? What is it? What exactly do you see that you have to fix there? Yes, the consistency all around, not just the pass. The pass defense starts up front again. You got you got to be able to get pressure on the quarterback, move them off the spot. Uh, the other night, um, we didn't do a great job of. Um, keeping our leverage and keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Um, there's, there was too many throwing lanes and obviously lanes that he was able to get out and run. Um, you know, and then in the, in the secondary, 
we've got to do we got to do a better job teaching and creating more consistency of how we're playing uh, certain techniques within coverages. We've seen Emac, you know, go up high point balls, run away from guys, but Burley's been kind of in a position to make guys miss, I guess, you know, and, and get some yak yards. We saw that a couple times, yeah. spin move, you know. Um, I don't know, that, that, where'd that come from? That, that, obviously, he was able to pull that off twice and uh, did it pretty effectively. Yeah, he did. There was a couple of uh, plays to what you're talking about earlier, just yards after catch, and what he was able to do there. Um, again, when there's a lot of numbers in the box, then we've got to be able to do those things on the perimeter. You get some one-on-one -on -one situations, that's where the efficiency in the pass game's got to pick up. Uh, find the space uh, that the defense is giving, be able to be efficient, um, connecting, and then being able to uh, get those yards after catch will be a, you know, a huge part of it as we move forward. It might not be everyone's favorite topic, but uh, punting, James Ferguson Reynolds through four games is obviously yeah. leading the nation. How valuable has what he's been yeah, able to do for huge. you? Yeah, it's been huge. I mean, he flipped the field really in a tight, tight game last week. He was able to flip the field, create field position, whether we were backed up in, career, in flipping the field and or pinning um, uh, the opposing team deep in their territory. Um, we, With that comes to, we've got to do a better job in our coverage as a punt team. Um, with some of those kicks, um, our urgency, uh, the protection, you know, on the uh, punt team is always the, the primary factor. And then when we transition into coverage, uh, we've got to do a better job with that, being that, you know, he's capable. One of those was a 67 yard punt. Well, we've got to get down the field and cover these things and do a better job, again, with our, with our tackling and our leverage. How big was getting Mason it. back uh, for you guys this week? And yeah. also, you know, moving him to guard, was that just kind of the way Garrett's been playing at center? Yeah, of course, like Mason comes back in. Now, Mason, you know, to be honest with you, Mason hasn't played since the fifth week of, or the fifth practice of fall camp. So, unbelievable job by our medical team and our, and our trainers uh, getting him ready to go. Uh, he really started into the vigil the week before on, on uh, Thursday, Friday, and then to be able to jump in. So, we didn't feel like it was the right thing to do to move Garrett, who has been playing well at center. Obviously, Mason has played guard. Mason can play either one inside, but it was huge. Um, showed to be very effective in his first game back, and we're excited about that. You mentioned the, the return issues, um, the defense a little bit. I think 100 yards to San Diego State on kickoff returns. But what are the specific issues there that you're trying to clean up this week? Yeah, so we've already spoke on the punt team. You know, a positive is James got a strong leg. He's got to be able to. Um, transition from protection and get down the field into our coverage and make sure that we're in our coverage lanes. And it's not much different on our kickoff team. Um, we, we understand each and every week we're going to face returners who are explosive. The, the last returner we faced, we knew the type of speed that we had, and we cannot give those guys space. And uh, it really comes down to being able to play with speed down the field. When, when you're on your coverage teams, naturally there's a lot of space on the field, right? So. Being able to play with leverage, understand um, returns and where they're going, be able to uh, break and beat leverages, and obviously uh, maintain your leverage. Why is why has the offensive line been so dominant, or maybe to use your word, why have they been so consistent? You know, when we've had different guys playing there because of injuries. I mean, we've gone you know seven seven deep into the L line, you know eight deep, and it's just uh, I will say this: it was. From the beginning of the year, Garrett, Kay, Ben, those guys have done a great job creating an identity, um, creating a standard in that room, and how they prepare each and every week, whether it's on the field and their expectations. Um, we're going to have to continue to grow that. It's not just going to happen from week to week. We've got to continue to grow that as we move along. Um, but it's also all they, they spend the time. That group probably spends the most time watching film together. Um, you know, in the film room, and the leaders lead that stuff. And, uh, and naturally, what you put into anything is what you get out of it. And so that's a great example. We felt all along, you know, as we've gone through the course of this year thus far, that, you know, our O line in particular, you know, Garrett and Kay, those guys are not only leaders of the O line, but they're leaders of our team because of how they prepare, um, how they perform in practice, and obviously how it leads into the game. What will the memories thought be like for you going back to the Liberty Bowl? You know what, I haven't even thought about it. Um, <laughs> I haven't even thought about it. It's been a long time since the last time I was there. But, uh, you know, it's part of the special deal of getting to play and coach. You know, um, you get to go places you never 
would have went without being a part of this game. You get to meet people um, that you wouldn't have been able to meet without being a part of this game. And uh, that's one thing too that you know we talk to our players about all the time. This is a grind, and it takes being your best each and every day um, to continue to grow um, and become you know what you're capable as an individual um, and as a team, but also. They're the, the places you get to go. Um, we obviously have a challenge of traveling across the country this week and going to a place that you know a lot of a lot of guys on this team and in this program haven't been. Um, that in itself is going to uh, create challenges, uh, whether it be travel or whatever it may be. But um, yeah, I haven't really thought specifically for myself. I've just been focused on the things that um, from one game going to the next game and the next opponent, what we need to do to be better. What do you remember about that interception return, though? Uh, I was very tired. <laughs> that is the one thing. I was very tired before it happened. You know, it was at the end of a drive. I don't know how many plays in that drive we were, but um, I was very thankful I made it there. And I was very tired afterwards. How impressed have you been with the rise of Marco? I mean, this guy, three weeks ago, I think he had three career tackles, and now he's your leading tackler. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it's, it's what you put into it is what you get out of it. This game requires so much of you day in and day out. And that's not a chore to Marco. Marco has fun with it. And maybe it's because of the position he was in last year when you know, he got hurt and got the game taken from him. And the grace he has each and every day to work, to prepare, to become his best. Um, again, what you put into anything is what you get out of it. And I think that's just another example for you know, guys you know, within our team that they can see of how a guy works and what's, what he puts in every day. And, um, the success he's able to have, and not just individually in the amount of tackles he's making, but what he's doing on the field, how he's helping lead as a middle linebacker. There's a lot of things that go into it, too. It's just not making tackles. You Has he embraced it. that kind of that role as, as being the leader? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's required as a middle linebacker. You know, you got to help set the fronts. you got to help handle coverages. There's a lot of things going on around you. Um, you know, our, our inside linebackers and our safeties uh, handle the operation of, of our defense. You mentioned you guys getting to go places I've never been, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's the first ever meeting against Memphis. Um, I mean, there was a year where you guys were both fighting for that group of five spot a couple of years ago. I mean, just, just in general, the matchup of Memphis and the series and, and going to play in there, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, like we said at the start, I mean, this is a top 25 team. They've shown, you know, with the uh, with the teams they played against very well last week, they're in position to win. Uh, they very well could have beat Missouri. Um, and. You can see it from how they built the roster and the things that they are doing on the field early on in the season here. Um, they've, done a, they've done a great job. As we said, it's going to be a huge challenge for us as we go on the road again. You know Drink, you know Kirby, they just beat these guys. Do coaches typically, would you hit those guys up and say, X, Y, Z, did that work? What do you think would work for us? You know how this goes in this coaching world. I would leave it at that. You know, I mean, that's where... As we all know, this isn't an easy profession, and you have enough uh, friends and people that you know from within your coaching trees and stuff like that. Where, whether it's the off season, during the season, um, you know, whether it's a text that had to say, "Hey, good job, man," or to show support, to help lean on each other. I mean, we're always, we, we're always talking to our buddies that are in uh, the profession. In the way the the bush is scheming Genty, I mean, obviously they know screens are coming, but there's different screens every week. What are you liking about this? How Bush is being able to get the ball to Genty in certain situations that feel like they're confusing to the defense. Well, again, that's where you know with, with George being out of the lineup right now, Breezy being able to step up, T. Crow being out of the lineup. Like, let's be honest. I mean, we got to be reasonable with you know what. Bush has, Bush has done a good job getting the ball to Ashton. Now where we can build that throughout the rest of the offense too with the, per, the performance and the production at practice and then being able to go do that on game day, that's a huge part of it right there. But it showed to be very effective uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks here. And now it's, there's going to be a lot of eyes on Ashton. Let's just say that, right? I mean, that's the obvious. So that opens up opportunities for the other personnel in our offense, and that's what that's what we want to continue to build on. Andy, the last two games, you know, a little bit of a slow start by the offense before they bounce back. After the North, North Dakota game, you kind of brought up the you know like the opening script and doing a better job of of executing those plays. Is, is it is it script? Is it execution? What do you, what do you kind of see in there that you want? And to that's where that's on us as coaches. That's 100 percent on us, and we'll we'll take 
And that starts with you and making sure that we're squared away. And then obviously when we put that plan, you know, when we put that plan down on paper and we show it on the screens and meeting rooms, then we work together in building, um, you know, that, that confidence that we always talk about through hard work during the course of the week and being able to go out and execute. We're through, you know, four games here in the season. Most, most teams have played four games now, right? So being able to see the film and be familiar with what people are going to be able to do, we should um, have a great idea now. By the makeup of our offense, you know, in our run game, week in and week out, I will say that we do get some different stuff um, from defenses than they've traditionally shown. You mentioned on your own the pack room after the game the other night. Uh, I know in the season it's hard to do real like live periods and practice and stuff. So how does it, was it something you saw? Was it just a random game where guys were missing tackles? Or, and how do you kind of in the middle of the season correct the pack room? See, that's something that we're on. It is tackle football. So we're on it all the time. And I'll be honest with you, there's, there's habits in practice that, you know, you can go back and look at film and be like, okay, what, again, what you put in the end is what you get out of it. And so uh, it's not only the drills we do, whether it's a controlled setting drill or it's a team drill, whether it's a group drill, whatever that looks like, it's number one, identifying what are the things that we need to do better in tackling from a fundamental standpoint. There's always a tracking phase. There's always a punch in the finish phase. Okay, we're specifically within those three things, what are the things that we're going to focus on? And then how are we going to rep that in individual, again, in group settings? And then most importantly, what does that look like and how we're finishing every single rep of practice and taking advantage of um, creating angles, uh, practicing taking angles, taking the grass in our track, and then how we uh, punch and finish that practice. Taylor ran the ball more than he had all season. What did you make of his decision making on Friday? Yeah, I mean, there was, again, there was some opportunities we created where we knew we were going to gain leverage. Um, for him to do those things. Um, and then there was opportunities where, uh, you know, it's a true read and he did a great job. Um, there is, uh, you know, as we, if we, as we spoke in all of long, that quarterback run number and how you use that within an offense could be to your advantage, you know, and then it's, again, it's the balance of how much you use it and how much you build things off of that. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Uh, DJ, DJ's warrior, he battled through this, not in, in his physical makeup and what he's able to do, but his mental too. Um, he's the team building him, the team captain for a reason. Uh, you're not going to find uh, <coughs> many better young men, you know, I mean, in terms of how they work, how they care about people, their maturity. Again, uh, you know, when you talk about the older guys helping the younger guys grow, there's a great example, you know, in terms of what Marco gets to see, what, what it looks like, what it should look like. St Static and Billy, um, two veteran wide receivers, but probably the production isn't matching their experience. How do you guys get? How do you get them more on track, or do you want them to be more on track? Yeah, there's well, the number one deal with that right there with uh, those guys is um, what goes into it, the amount of targets, right? There. And then being able to win on those targets, and that's what we're going to bring. We're, we 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 got to do a better job of making sure that they fully understand. As coaches, we got to do a better job um, making sure they understand what the plan is, what it looks like, how we, we've got to create separation so that when we do target, we're able to you know be efficient in the pass game and get the ball in their hands. Uh, Steph had a really uh, obviously big time third down catch last week. Ran out of a tackle. Um, he got some yards after contact. You know how we continue to build that in and, and get more of that. That's going to be a focus. I would ask you to see Jay and Beverly uh, rip off an extra turn there. Do you think they have a pretty cool mentality back there as a returner? Since yeah. Opportunity. It seems like you know. Since last year when KD uh, got his opportunity to jump back there, he's done a nice job. Uh, being able to get him back in last week, he had one uh, really explosive uh, return last week. Um, it's not just our coverage team, but we were actually we're doing some good things on special teams too. Um, we were able to rip off a huge explosive uh, kickoff return, and we were, you know, one guy away from a couple more, to be honest with you. And that was one thing that really improved uh, our emphasis on our kickoff return team last week and certain parts of it. And those guys stepped up. It's not only KD, but, you know, he, he, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of room on KD's uh, explosive uh, kickoff return. But guys got on bodies and they covered guys up and blocked guys better than we have. we got to continue to build off that because we have a returner who is more than willing you know, to get that ball and, and hit a vertical. Well, getting back to your, your kickers really quick, been around the game for a while. At the college level, 
several luxuries to have a punter that can average 51 plus and a field goal kicker that you feel could have been 55 plus. I mean, that, that seems pretty unique for, for college ball. Yeah, you know, those guys, uh, um, they're doing a great job for them to continue on. Obviously, it's going to be the consistency and how we prepare and train and stay the course. And I'll be honest with you, like, we love, we love those guys for who they are and what they do. James has grown a ton since he's been here. Like, you see what he's doing on the field it's because James, James has grown a lot as a young man. As we spoke on before, it's not easy to move from another country and come here and then uh, to be able to jump in and play this. And, and that's all we're asking of everybody here is this, when we talk about that continued growth, there's an example right there for a guy like James. Um, and, and then when, when that growth happens off the field and the process, you know, what it is for him to prepare each and every week, then that consistency comes. You know, Jonah, Jonah, we, you know, you're talking about a guy that's done this for a while now. And, uh, um, he is really, he's one of the leaders on our team, let alone that specialist group. And, you know, how he continues to grow and push himself, he'll also continue to grow and uh, push that group. Jaden Virgin had the first career fumble recovery. Uh, you know, kind of watching that play, it kind of looked like he was, kept his eye on the quarterback the entire time. You know, just what do you like about his focus and his will to finish the play like that? Yeah, Jaden uh, is, Jaden's making progress now. Um, you know, and we're, we're excited to get a guy like Cortez back too, um, you know, that is going to be back in the mix. Um, but Jaden's done a really good job in the last couple of weeks. There's been tremendous growth. And that particular play that you're talking about on the fumble, I mean, he took on a block. The struck the guy got off, escaped through his leverage. Ahmed, you know, made a good tackle on the quarterback and he punched the quarterback, he punched the ball out. And because of Jaden's second effort to get to the ball, he was he was there and there was, you know, a scrum as you could imagine in football to see who was gonna get the football. And so it was a nice shot by him battling to get that ball. That was a big time play. He wants to see a judge tight end value on how many passes he catches, but how can you sum up the value of Matt Louder and, and Riley Smith and, and yeah. how hard those guys are playing right now. I mean, you can go back and watch. Riley's diving to make blocks at times and one was kind of a bogus hold call, but just the, 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 the level of... Well, we pointed that out in our team meeting uh, yesterday. Um, what that tight end group is doing and how Coach Potter has grown those guys. It's a battle in practice each and every week going against you know, you know the, the edge players and the tight ends. And, those guys have done an unbelievable job. They, last week was, you know, they've had some good performances. Last week was their best performance. Um, the selflessness of what they do for the team. Um, and, you know, with the things that will, will come off of that now, you know, again, being able to establish the run game and then what comes off of the run game. Um, we hope there's, there'll be some opportunities for them today too. But love what those guys are doing. Uh, Matt Louder is another young guy that is, he looks a lot different right now than he did even in the beginning of the year, let alone last year. You know, I know Ashton's terrific, but I'm sure some of it is Coach J-Mo coming in and working with him. What have you noticed with James Montgomery taking Ashton Gentry to another level so far, Andy? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that was a, that's a huge part coming into the program and having the running back room and the guys in there. It's gotten a little thin, but you can see the development too, you know, being able to get – uh, breezy going and get him ready, you know, that just shows too, um, you know, not only in the run game, like obviously it's visible to everybody when these guys have the ball in their hand and in the pass game and being able to get them the ball that way as well, but uh, they do a good job in protection. Um, and that's not always easy for tailbacks. That's usually the hardest thing for a young player to come in, whether it's to the college level and on to the NFL. You always hear about all right, we're going to have to get him to, to understand protections and because you ain't going to be in there if you can't protect the quarterback. And so that's just the thing that maybe goes unnoticed as well that we feel like our guys have done a good job of and they're going to have to continue to grow. And as we spoke on this week, it's going to be a, a big deal given the defensive front that we're facing. Anything else?